Hi guys, for a random thought Thursdays today, I thought something that I should um, kind of talk on is long hauling. So a lot of people ask me about this because I do a lot of long hauls with my horses. And when I say a long haul, anything I consider a long haul, well, it might be different for someone else. I think anything over maybe six to eight hours um, is long. So I'm gonna share with you some of my tips, things that I do um, by, you know, kind of personal preference and experience, uh, what works for me and what I think is important when you're hauling horses for a long time. So wrapping a horse's legs, do you do it or do you not? That is a preference thing. And I also think it depends on a few other factors. So are you gonna be driving on rough roads? What kind of a trailer do you have? If it's an older trailer, you know, you might want a little bit more shock absorption on their legs, things like that. Um, so I don't tend to wrap my horse's legs unless I'm going for a longer drive. So if I'm only taking them somewhere, you know, two hours, three hours, I won't wrap their legs. Grinch is a little older, she's 13, so I tend to wrap her legs more. I also wrap her legs because she likes to spin around in the trailer really fast and she is a little bit clumsy, so I just feel like having wraps on her legs is just an extra layer of protection for when she does exit the trailer. Um, and I find too, sometimes an older horse will want to get a little bit stocked up if they've been standing for a long time. So wrapping their legs or putting something like uh, quick wraps from back on track or the handsbow quick wraps on is an option. So I'm going to show you guys a couple of the things that I have. All right. So excuse how dirty these are, but these are the quick wraps I was talking about. So back on track makes them. I know handsbow makes them as well. They're just two different brands, similar type product. People will tell you different, but same idea. The thing with that in the um, product of back on track is that it will help with circulation and soreness. So it's kind of a good thing to have on their legs. However, back on track can get a little bit warm. So if it's really hot out, I prefer not to use that. And I might do something like standing wraps. And standing wraps are kind of the old try and true method. Um, also a good thing, you know, to help bring down any inflammation and whatever because it's almost like a compression wrap. So I'll just use these quilted um, white, whatever, uh, standing wraps. And then I just wrap with a, um, standing bandage kind of thing. And those are a good option too. If you don't know how to do a proper standing wrap, ask someone that knows what they're doing to show you before you start doing that on your horse. Cause you can cause a little bit of damage. I mean, they're kind of forgiving because you do have this quilted, um, thing there, but just ask for some help. Something I get asked a lot is how often do I take the horses out of the trailer to walk them? And I'll be honest, I don't a lot. It kind of depends on how far I'm going. I'd say anything over six to eight hours, I'll tend to take them out and walk them around. So if I'm going to be in the trailer eight hours, I'll walk them at four hours and kind of let them stretch their legs. But the reality is, is if you're hauling a lot of horses, sometimes there's no safe spot that you can stop and let them all out. Not to mention if you have eight horses and you're one person, it's just not possible. So I've also been told that you know, getting them out is great, but if you don't have that ability, even stopping and letting um, the horse's head doors down so they can relax and stretch out is a break for them as well from moving. So keep in mind that if you can't take them out and walk around, this is a good option too. Okay, so um, the nice thing about my like living quarters trailer is that it has drop down windows. So that means it's really easy to give the horses water. When it's hot out, I give them water every time I stop, which usually ends up being like, I think the longest I'll go is about three hours because I'm gonna have to go to the bathroom, my dog's gonna have to go to the bathroom and you need to fuel up and get food and do all that. So every time I stop when it's really hot out, I try to kind of cram all my stops into one efficient stop uh, but in that stop I will offer water to my horses again it's really easy for me because I have those drop down windows my little bumper pull trailer does not have that I it just has the stock sides on it which I'll show you what I mean by that and um, so that I can only water the horses if I actually take them out of the trailer all right, so you guys are gonna know what I'm talking about, some of you, when I say the living quarters has these drop down doors. So these are super handy because I can reach into the horse part and give them water. See on my little bumper pull trailer that it just has the stock sides on it. So I can't 
watered in through the trailer, but I just like to, I mean, I don't take as many long trips in this trailer anyway, uh, but if I do need to water them, they're gonna have to come out of the trailer for that. Okay, so when it comes to things like water, um, we're pretty lucky hauling in the summer. Most gas stations uh, actually have a water tap on the building or by the pump, um, or if you're going somewhere that you to dump an RV, they'll have a hose there too. Um, so that's pretty easy in the summer months. It's a little more difficult, especially for us up here um, where water gets turned off in the winter. So um, I have water on my trailer as well, which is really handy. But if you don't have that ability, get yourself one of these. They're super handy. You can buy them anywhere that sells camping stuff. Even like Walmart will sell it. Um, or you can get even those big jugs that you would use for... Um, like for human water, I guess you could say. And yeah, I just fill a couple of those. They're super handy to have. And that way you always have water, especially when it's really hot out. You don't have to worry about, you know, trying to pull a big trailer into a small space to try and find water somewhere. So trying to keep those horses cool in the trailer in the hot summer months is a really important thing. So when it's 40 degrees, which I think is like 110 Fahrenheit for my American viewers, uh, it is difficult to keep a horse cool in the trailer. If you have the ability to keep the windows open um, and allow some airflow, that's awesome. One thing that I do when it's really, really hot out is I will actually go into a gas station, buy a big bag of ice, and I'll break up the ice really good, and then I will dump it on top of the shavings and then have my horses stand on top of it. And believe it or not, it actually cools the trailer down quite a lot. Um, if you live somewhere that's humid, that might not be the best idea because I wonder like, maybe if the shavings would just stay wet, I don't know. Where I live, it's dry and hot. So here, it's something that we can get away with. I find it cools them down while it's in there and then they might be standing on wet shavings for a little bit, but where I live, it'll tend to dry up so they're not standing in too much moisture. But that's something that I'll do when it's really, really hot out. Um, other people will say things like, you know, hauling in the evening or maybe early in the morning, whatever, to avoid the heat. But the reality is that can't always be the case. So for example, you know, there's some days where we might run in the rodeo slack in the morning and then have to drive somewhere for an afternoon rodeo or evening rodeo. So you're driving in the middle of the heat during the day and there's just nothing that you can do about that. So um, the icing is a really good thing, having some airflow in there and just making sure you're offering those horses water as much as you can. All right, you guys, well, hopefully those were some, answered some of the questions for you about long hauls. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments down below. Um, I'll do my best to answer those for you, but these were just uh, some, you know, kind of things that I found over time work for me. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of people are curious about that. So good luck on your long hauls and thanks for watching, you guys.